Hello everybody, my name is Dr. Hanin Hamnouch and I am the guest curator of the exhibition Slow Color Photography, which I had the chance of preparing with my colleague, photograph conservator Jens Gold, here at Preuss Museum in Horten, Norway. So this exhibition deals with the history of interferential color photography. And although it focuses on the works of two photographers, Hans Lehmann and Richard Neuhaus, who were both in the German Empire, the story of Gabriel Lippmann himself is no less interesting. If you would Google Gabriel Lippmann very quickly, you will no doubt find very interesting information about him available online. Still, one piece of information that is often missing from most texts is that Gabriel Lippmann came from a Jewish family. Although you will read that his nationality was Luxembourgian French, this term Luxembourgian French needs some unpacking. And as a historian, this is precisely where I like to intervene because the history of art, which is my specialty, the history of photography and the history of science are always embedded in a political context that shapes them, that shapes their reception, and most importantly, that structures the lives of the people who are practicing this kind of science. The Lippmanns had been established in Luxembourg for quite a while. They were successful because they had a leather manufacturing and dyeing company. So they were producing gloves. And despite the fact that they were at least of some privilege and had a good life, in 1845, Gabriel Lippmann's father, Isai Lippmann, was fed up with the anti-Semitism that he experienced in Luxembourg. Despite, being, despite living there for quite a while, he was not allowed to vote in his community of Hollerich. Being a man of means, he moved his family to Paris. Now, some historians would tell you that the Lippmanns moved because they wanted to give their son Gabriel a great opportunity to study in Paris because he was born that year, 1845. This is not entirely true because Gabriel Lippmann was homeschooled for the first 10 years of his life. So the Lippmann family's move from Luxembourg to Paris was not entirely motivated by better educational opportunities for their son in the French capital. Because of the Code Napoléon in France at the time, Jewish people were able to remain and could, have, could live a life like decent human beings without having to move every once in a while as soon as the politics of where they were kept getting more and more conservative. Yet, France was not entirely a safe haven for Gabriel Lippmann. Although he won the Nobel Prize for Physics in 1908 against his German rival Max Planck, the quantum physicist, and although the French press celebrated his success as a national and nationalist victory, locally and Paris itself, he was often attacked by the right-wing press for his more liberal political views. And this unfolded in a very specific context, which is starting 1894, French society was very much divided by the Dreyfus Affair, which you might have heard about in your, in your history lesson. Captain Alfred Dreyfus, through a spectacular miscarriage of justice, was accused of revealing military secrets to the German Empire. And as a French Jewish man, the odds were stacked against him. Despite a lot of evidence attesting to his innocence, this evidence was suppressed and he was exiled at the end of the world for life, or this was the original sentence, until, until there was strong political intervention in his favor. Now this event, a major moment in the history of anti-Semitism, tore apart the fabric of French society. Gabriel Lippmann considered himself a Dreyfusard, who understood the perfidious nature of what can only be called a political and human catastrophe, and asserted Dreyfus's innocence. So too did other scientists at La Sorbonne at the time. Still, the rise of the French far right with its xenophobic, chauvinistic, and anti-Semitic overtones and undertones arguably made for a very unpleasant working environment. 
What made things worse for Gabriel Lippmann was that he supported Marie Curie's attempt to enter the French Academy of Science. Although he would not nominate her for the Nobel <laughs> Prize uh, for Physics, for which he would only nominate her husband, Pierre Curie and Henri Becquerel, when Marie Curie won it and was publicly demanding she become part of the French Academy of Science, Gabriel Lippmann and Henri Poincaré, the, the mathematician, supported her in public, to which the French Academy of Science replied with a mind-blowing sentence of, the French Academy of Science in Paris is open to everybody in the world except women. So this made matters worse for Lippmann and the French press, and um, the right-wing monarchist journalist uh, Alphonse Daudet replied to him saying, we're not gonna listen to this, and I quote, Jew of color photography. So Lippmann's situation in Paris at the time was quite contentious. Locally, he was the Jewish scientist, the Jewish color photographer, the Jewish color photographer and physicist, and constantly beaten down for it. And his family has historically experienced this. Yet, when he won the Nobel Prize, at least according, at least for the gaze of people outside of France, he was heralded as the French scientist. And this is important to keep in mind. Anytime you are confronted with a photograph, with, a, with any kind of art and with any kind of science, to ask yourself, what are the conditions under which this kind of knowledge is produced? Is it produced in a climate of duress? Is it produced in a climate of oppression? Is the person behind this kind of science suffering because of who they are? And is the institution in which this kind of science is produced using their results but in order to make itself look better on the outside? Or is it really treating them like a human being? Some things never change. And questions of equality, of politics, of visibility, of representation, and of discrimination are sadly eternal. And so when you visit an exhibition like this, you will be confronted with some of these questions that I hope you will carry with you later. So please visit the exhibition, Slow Color Photography. Thank you. <laughs>